Wow, the desk is kind of busy today. Got a lot going on. Hey everybody, it is Sunday, January the 13th, 2019. This is the end of the weekend shop update. We're not going to try and spend too much time, but who knows? We'll see how it goes. I always feel like a kid that's knocked off a candy store when I go through the stuff that I have um, either out in the Jeep or in tackle trays that I am going to repaint. Now, this stuff has seen uh, vehicles, and some of it's been thrown, some of it has not. And then if you guys are ever wondering, let's move this light up a little bit, what all this stuff is. This is stuff that has not been fished. A lot of the times I'll pull it out of the package. That doesn't count. This one right here, you guys know that I did that not too long ago. Um, but this stuff mostly is Strike Kings, mostly Square Bills. These are what most of the, the folks that sling paint call their bread and butter because nine times out of ten, you're going to sell these to clients more, uh, more frequently than you would you know some of the other stuff because everybody fishes a square bill, even if they're beginning anglers, if they're not tournament oriented. Um, and then I've got some, obviously, some other stuff down here. And these, these are all Strike Kings, Six Cents, Excaliburs. There's some Rapala gear in here. There's some Man's Baby One Minus. Um, try and do it by size. And then you'll see that these switch every so often. Um, a lot of times I'll, I'll try and find stuff on sale. Like, for example, that might have come out of a mystery tackle box that's never seen the water. And then I frequently purchase Strike King products at every chance I can because they're reliable, they make a darn good square bill, and comparatively to a lot of the other stuff that's out there, they're relatively inexpensive, and a lot of anglers just, they like the brand names. And uh, it's, it's a little bit less expensive for the angler as well to, to purchase a Strike King. But on this stuff down here these are all there's a couple of things going on here with orders now this these are the duos and these are they're packaged specifically for china but it is from everything that i can see and, and we've tested weights it is the duo blank so there's a lot of different levels in what you get when you're throw and paint and when you're a lure designer or an airbrush artist that's doing fishing lures um, some stuff out there on the market is really really good some stuff on the market is absolute garbage um, and a lot of us get samples from all over the place and you just kind of have to sift through but if you're patient enough to really do some research you can find some some decent stuff out there so these are phenomenal blanks and the blanks themselves if if you're looking at blanks now these aren't blanks these are actually this is the package duo that's specifically packaged for china um and, and i got samples of those which is why this has come in so what i'll do is i'll take a duo because i carry duos over here you can see there's a bunch of them sitting over there um but i i, I as a blank you can strip it down and you can see if it looks the same if if your pen points are, are similar the way that they press the mold together um, what kind of gear what kind of ball bearings are inside to make the rattle sound um, and just basically how well the bills and blanks are put together so cedar run is currently carrying the blank copy of this particular duo replica and they're very good and then dinger right down here is carrying the longer bill the 65b so that's just um I, my props to those guys this morning because they do go above and beyond uh, and they really try and get in some phenomenal blanks and there's no shipping from china for you guys so that's i'm always going to try and recommend the places that i've had success with i'm not sponsored by these guys but there really are differences between some of the blanks that are out there a lot of it's in the plastics people ask me all the time what's going on with you know why i only paint real whopper ploppers well it's specifically that the material that the replicas are made of are garbage unfortunately and i hate saying that but that's the honest to god's truth um, and that's not true of all blanks. Some blanks out there are phenomenal and they're really, really good. 
um, the, the gear, the mechanisms, the weight's different, it sits differently in the water. There's just a lot of things. Um, so that's stuff that you guys should know about. And as painters, I, I hope that you are able to find that out and have success with the, with the blanks that are out there. Let's get into this though. I've spent five minutes talking about, I don't know, it's kind of sounded like I'm rambling, but it is Sunday morning. We're gonna start with this little guy right here. This is the Imperial Crawl. Now this, um, get the camera to focus. Can we get a focus for, there you are. Um, this is gonna be going out to Mike. So your order is pretty much set. Um, I'm dressing the gear right now and we should get you for your Tuesday date as promised for the ship out but a little 1.5, high-pitched rattle, weighted pretty well, pressed from those, those Lucky Craft blanks. So that is the Imperial Crawl. This is the Colorado Crawl on a pointer style. Love the blue in this, love the blue fade. Something about blue on a jerk bait. Walleye seem to love that too. You guys were asking about this bait. Let's bring that into the camera into focus. This is that Mac style. It's got plum on the bottom, purple fade underneath. And then that traditional frog green and jets and eyes. Fun popper. And I kind of accented, I did red on the outside and black on the inside to kind of give you more of a, a depth to the mouth of this frog since it is that gill, gill through flow, water flow technology. Lots of fun with that. There's a couple others here as well. This is the chart topper. Sorry about that dip in the lighting. This one I accented a little bit darker on top, light on the bottom. So that's the, and, and think about the shading. When you guys are trying to mimic something on the top of the water eating, you're gonna see a shadow from the top because that's where your light source comes from. So it's natural to see a shadow there. So think about that when you shade the inside of the mouth. It's just one extra step but um, it could be the difference between catching a fish and not catching a fish. And then just red, orange, yellow on the bottom. Chart topper. That's available online. This is a Japanese beetle. This was a customer request. This is actually two orders I've got going on down here. Um, but I haven't painted one of these in a while, but I forgot how cool this looks. It's just blue. There's no green in this. That's just the blending that the paints did together um, when I blended the blue and the yellow. Of course, that's, you know, that's the colors that make, two primary colors that make green. Um, and then I did the overlay with the off-ray ribbon. That's that double wire on either side. It's about two and a half inches thick. Fun little pattern to do. This is the 1.5 Japanese beetle. It's a pumpkin seed. I'll get that in the light. Make sure we get that close up. Love doing these patterns. And again, that's the same ribbon. And all we're doing here is just laying down yellow and purple. A little bit of blue on the cheeks and on the tail. Everything else is a blend. There's four colors, basic colors, to this bait. Your overlay. And when we do the overlay, in order to really get the color to pop off the top of it, for all the layers that are underneath, lay down, like once you once you attach your off-ray ribbon, lay down white, lay down another layer of primer with that ribbon, whatever mesh you have, and then spray your, and heat set that, and then spray your colors over top of that. Makes a big difference in the clarity of how these colors behave against one another. That's just a fun, I love doing pumpkin seeds like this. Try to make my own patterns up. I don't want to look like anybody else's and I think that you guys should do that too. I love that I'm teaching you guys but take it a step further. Don't absolutely imitate baits. Come up with your own stuff. And there's that one. A couple of camouflage. 
And these are just, that's just a bunch of layering. Start out with the burnt orange and olive drab green, army green I call it, in some random spots. And then overlay various patterns. And these are the field camos. Going back to these. That punch bowl shad. And then we've got a neon sushi. A little white accent up top. These eyes are painted. Just low pressure. Insert the eyes before you start in that traditional fire tiger pattern. Got some more of these. I showed and featured these on the last couple of shop updates, so I won't spend a whole bunch of time on that. Um, and I've featured these before, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on these, these mad tiger clowns, but boy, are they cool. Love those things. And that is all the news that's fed to print. Thanks for hanging out with us. We've run a little bit over, but it's a Sunday. Playoff season. And I will catch you guys on the spray session coming out Tuesday. Here it comes. You guys take care. We'll see you.